All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am going to rate and sort of review through pictures your guys's cars. I asked you guys to send me in your cars and I got a lot of replies. So if I don't spend enough time with your car, I'm really sorry, but I really want to get through everyone's cars and give my opinion on them. I hope you guys are enjoying my quarantine beard. Uh, it has been 10 days since I've actually filmed a car review, which is the longest I have gone without filming a car review in probably the last two or three years. Um, so it's it's very new territory, and I'm going to try to grow it out uh, until I get behind the wheel of another new car. So I apologize for the scraggliness at the moment, but I have so many cars to get through. I'm super excited. I took a peek at a couple of them, but I haven't seen all of them yet. Um, and we're actually going to start off with a couple of my friends texted me theirs uh, to get into first. So the first one is from Lucas. It is his Unos Roadster. Now, of course, I've actually seen this car in person. It's very clean. I love the color. The only thing I, I hate about this car is the fact that I don't have a good spot for it. I don't really have a good video to make about this car. I'd love to feature it on the channel. I'd love to do a review, but I already did a Unos Roadster. Maybe as time goes on, since that Unos Roadster I filmed two years ago, maybe you know, maybe it's time to re-up my uh, my review on the Unos Roadster. Maybe I'll do that, something of a sort. But right now, I don't have a good spot for it, which really irritates me. But the car is super clean. Um, and I, I absolutely love that. So thank you, Lucas. I also got a message from Daniel Atkins from Atkins Rotary for his 1997 Ford F-250. Uh, he's been using to haul lumber and such out in Seattle. Uh, super clean. I mean, they actually have clean cars out there, which I'm super jealous about. And uh, hopefully one day I'll get behind the wheel of that bad boy. So now we are switching over to the emails. These are your guys' submissions. So the first one is from Fiero Kyle. Here's some pictures of my 1986 Pontiac Fiero GT. Got it out of storage and unit about two and a half years ago when I was 15 and got it running. I've done small things to it over time, like custom coilovers, custom air intake, custom front splitter, new fuel system, new brake system. Everything has been rebuilt on it so far. Uh, it has come a long way and it's a pretty cool daily. I like the car a lot. I obviously love a good sort of barn find story. It looks really, really clean. I really like it. Hopefully I should be filming a Fiero later this year once we're out of this quarantine stuff. So really great job with the front end. I don't know if you painted it or not. Um, it looks scuffed up from the barn, but it looks good um, in the rest of the picture. So really good job restoring it. Uh, and if I mean, it, for most of these cars, I would love to review pretty much any one of these cars. So if you're watching this and I'm featuring your car and you would be okay with me reviewing it, email me uh, the info about that same email, pradoreviews at gmail.com. So thank you, Kyle. Now we have our first of many RX-7s. Uh, hey, my name is Kyle, another Kyle. I have an 82 GSL RX-7 that is in the process of getting an S13 front suspension and S13 rear coilovers in the rear and getting a built 12A. So that's actually really interesting. He's doing a an S13 front subframe swap and actually it's black and he has the same pinstriping, actually identical pinstriping to the shell that I was originally gonna buy, that black one, which is really interesting. Built 12A is pretty cool. Um, not the route I would go, but hey man, if you could find parts to build a 12A by all means. And I think longevity wise, switching over to S13 stuff could be good um, because those parts will always be available. Next one is from Evan. He just says, why not? And it seems to be a Subaru Forester. Uh, I think that's the first gen. Um, not quite sure. I love these cars. Um, the only thing I'm going to say about your car, I hope that hood scoop is functional. I hope it is turbo, uh, something of the sort. I hope you don't just have that for looks, but by looks of it, it looks like a decently clean car, which is hard to find for Foresters. All right, so next up is from Tad. So I know you have pictures of my car already, but thought I'd send some recent posts. Looking forward to your review on my car when the weather cooperates. So this is a 2019 uh, Dodge Charger Daytona 392. Yes, I've been meaning to review this car. The thing that sucks about the location of this car is that it's about five hours away from me. And so it's this weird sort of uh, middle ground where it's it's not far enough to like fly and get a hotel and, and do all this stuff, but it's not short enough where I could really do it in a day trip. Um, usually sort of three hours is my cutoff there and then things like that. So I, I will get around to reviewing this car. It's super clean. I love the color. 
absolutely love the color. I don't think I've seen many other Chargers or really Dodge products in this sort of dark forest green. It almost, in some lighting, looks like, like a Millennial Jade from a, a Nissan. So thank you for uh, the Charger. So this one's from Tyler. He says, big fan, Tyler. And he just left his Instagram. I, are these both of his? I mean, it's he. so he just sent me a picture of the FD and the FB. Um, so the FB in the background, obviously love that cream color on FBs. I think that's absolutely great. The FD, I really, really like, I love yellow FDs. Uh, it has the, I believe 99 spec front bumper, uh, looks absolutely great. Um, and it's really cool that you have both generations. I, you know, I always categorize FD people as the, they're sort of different than older rotary people. You know, normally you'll see guys go rx2 rx3 rx4 first gen rx7 and then so, sort of the second half of rotary people is fc fd and then rx8 people are just on their own planet so both cars look really really clean uh and i'm super jealous of that of course next on zach uh great name uh greetings i'm a big fan of what you're doing on the channel i have a mostly stock 2011 mini cooper s it has an intake and exhaust looks pretty nice i actually like mini coopers they're a lot more spacious on the inside than you know i would think uh yeah, yeah I, I i like mini coopers i like the exhaust pokes out a little bit too much for my liking um but it you know just nice simple easy modifications uh to uh to a mini i think you know keep it relatively clean don't don't slam it, and I think you'll be fine. I actually really like the way minis handle. Um, maybe that's just me. So this one has uh, no name from what I can see, and I don't want to give out his email address. But he sent three pictures containing three cars. I'm not quite sure which ones are him because all three cars are in the same. I, I don't know if he know owns all of these or not. I love the colors of all of these. Orange F. Wait, no, that's an SA. So an orange SA, really, really cool. I love those wheels. I'd love to do a similar wheel setup on my FB. Love those wheels. And I think the, the orange is really special. Then I think we have a Lotus and what looks like a Ferrari. I'm not really too keen on, uh, I, well, I don't know a whole lot about Ferraris and Lotuses. Um, I think that's a Lotus Esprit. I think those were V8 turbos, if I remember correctly, from the Top Gear uh, special, but those are all super, super cool. I wish I could drive all of these cars. They look great. And uh, it's starting to grow on me. People molding turbo two hood scoops on the first gen RX sevens. At first I hated it. I hated it with a passion, but now I'm, I'm starting to come around to it. I love those BBS wheels too. So this one is from Jake and it just says <laughs> Miata shitbox 1994, uh, and his at is at no name underscore yada it looks nice my friend theo actually used to have a very similar car to this i like the subtle wing i like the subtle flares i, I like the wheels i like this it's, it's a very reserved setup it's not too low for my liking you know i think a lot of people dump miatas and i just i, I don't understand it a little bit lower is good but you know, not too much. I think that's a really, really clean car, and I'm, I'm interested to see what he has under the hood. Next up, we have Sarah, and it is a 1974 Volkswagen Super Beetle. This is absolutely cool. I love Beetles. I love first-gen Beetles. I've always wanted to get my hands on one to review, and I think this is just such a cool, clean one. It, it looks very clean from the pictures, and, uh, yeah, I'd love to rotary swap one. I'd love to throw a 13B into the back of one because the swap kits are only like 600 bucks. I have a rotary. If I ever, you know, put a bigger motor into the FB, you know, I'll have a 13B just sitting around. So Sarah, thank you so much for sending in your 74 Beetle. So this is from Ben. This is my 2003 GMC Sierra. It's mostly stock with a 2.5 inch lift and 33 inch tires. The last picture is taken before the lift and it had 31 tires on it. I like it. Seems super clean. Um, for these trucks, these older trucks like this, I just have to say, uh, just undercoat the crap out of them really take rust protection to the next level because i know these trucks seem to rust out but it looks pretty clean it looks nice and i actually haven't done any well i did an older oh wait no i totally did a 2003 sierra but it was a step side i haven't done the the full cab i like these trucks i, re I really really like them next up we have jason he just says the whip 84 gsl of course an FB RX-7. So it looks pretty clean. A little bit of front end damage, but that's not bad. I mean, what can I say? I love the factory pinstriping. 
or I don't know if those are factory or dealer option, but it has a pinstriping going around the back. I want to do a similar thing on my FB, but I, I, I think overall it looks really good. All right, moving right along here. And actually, while filming this, I got one more email. So the very last car I got literally while filming this. So this car is from Drifting Chipmunk, and it's just a picture of a convertible RX-7 S4 taillights, but it has the S4 uh, 5050 taillights. So the bottom half is white, top half is red. I really, really like that. I think he's in New York. Um, so I thought that was sort of more like a Euro spec Euro thing, but I actually kind of like it. I think it works well. I love the wheels. I think the wheels work really well on this. Um, and you know, you got to love an RX-7. I like convertibles. I would pick up a, a convertible for, uh, like a cruiser car. The next one is from Frankie. Uh, and all he sent me was two out of 10. I've actually driven this car. I'm pretty sure he sent me a picture. I'm pretty sure this is the picture I took out at Autobahn country club. Love Frankie. If you're watching, thank you so much. Um, I miss you, man. When this quarantine's up, we got to do rotary things because I, I haven't done group rotary things in quite some time. So it, it's well overdue. The car, the car is not the cleanest thing in the world, his his RX-7, but it is by far one of the most abused RX-7s I've seen. I mean, he thoroughly takes it on the track, he thrashes it, he bashes it, and the thing keeps up. And he's done a lot of really, really good, really quality work to it. He hasn't hacked it up, he hasn't, you know, done... Well, he hacked up a bumper, but he switched back now. Um, but he's done, like, really solid suspension, and the, the car drives really, really well. Um, so I'm, I'm happy for him in that way. Next one's from Mike and it's an EK Civic. Um, I've actually met Mike before. Nice guy. Uh, I like it. I, I like the nice, clean, simple Civics. It's not overdone. Um, I really like the wheels. I don't know what kind of wheels those are, but overall it's just a clean, simple Civic. And, and I think we need more of those. I think that would make me hate Civics less is if people just did more clean, subtle, whatever's. So this one's from Caden. Here's my flippy boy. I know it's not super exciting because it's pretty much stock. I totally understand if it doesn't make the video. You guys need to have like a little bit more uh, confidence with these because I got a couple of these messages where it's like, it's okay if it doesn't make the video. Like, ha have pride in your vehicle, you know? I like it. Super clean. Again, what I'm going to say with all these Miatas is just try your best to preserve these things because they are going away and they're going away very, very quickly. Um, I don't know if the video's up yet, but I did a commentary track for a documentary from 2006 called Slide America. It's a drifting documentary and I'd highly recommend checking it out. However, in the movie, everyone has super clean, rust-free, stock body Nissan 240SXs. I mean, they're like a dime a dozen and that was 14 years ago which is a decent amount of time, but now you cannot find a stock body clean 240SX. So these cars are going away. So if you have a clean Miata, uh, you know, anything older and clean, just keep it that way. Next one's from Marcus. Some pics of my Iron Meatball and the Land Yacht. Hopefully we can shoot a video sometime soon. Yes, I actually, um, I actually had to cancel on Marcus because of this whole coronavirus thing. Um, so I will be reviewing his cars uh, once this lifts. Uh, he's very high up on my list. I love the Volvo. The Volvo actually was in one of my vlogs a while ago. Um, we just ran into him on the street. Uh, I hadn't met him before that, and he's a super cool guy, and uh, and I, I, I love the wheels on his Volvo. I have not seen in person yet his Land Yacht, which is a Buick Roadmaster, I believe in 96. Um, I love the the sort of wheel arch in the back. I love how it covers part of the wheel. I don't know why. I just think that's it's such like an old timey sort of quirk of a car, but it it really gives the car a lot of road presence. I like it a lot. Next up, we have Harrison. Howdy. This is my 2001 Dodge Ram WS. Is that like the Workman edition or something? I, I'm not familiar with WS, but it has a 3.9 liter V6 regular cab short box. Uh, it's my first truck kind of like yours. I got this truck two months ago, and since then, it's been amazing. I think I commented on one of your Instagram posts about the truck. Thanks, Harrison. Yeah, so I obviously, my heart melts for second gen Dodge Rams just because that was uh, my first car and I, I absolutely love it. Again, go under your bed and bedline everything uh, because these trucks love to rust. We got a little video here um, we can play. Doing a cold start. God, that starter motor. That starter motor is like...
bashed into my PTSD of owning that truck. But thank you, Harrison, for sending in your Dodge. Next one is up from Ben, and it just says S13 butthole drifting. So I actually know Ben personally, really good kid. And this car has seen a lot of changes. I hope he cleans it up. I, you know, I, I think this car is definitely a good contender for being a really clean S13 build. So Ben, if you're watching, I hope you get a, a nice solid layer of paint on this thing. Cause th after that, I think it'll, I think it'll be a really nice car. This one comes from Zachary spelled differently than me though. Uh, this is my Jetta. It's an 05 and it's my first VW. It's so nice. It has pulse rims, tinted windows. Love the channel. Well, thank you. I like these Jettas. I, d I don't know if this is the, the two liter turbo, if this is the five cylinder. I've actually never driven a five cylinder uh, Volkswagen. I've driven one five cylinder. It was a 300D Mercedes. So it was a diesel turbo five cylinder which is just weird. But thank you so much for sending in your Jetta. Looks good. This is from The Dice. Hello, I'm 17 years old and I live in, I'm not gonna say, uh, and this is my hairdresser car. It's a 1996 NA shitbox lowered stock 1.8 with pot filter air intake and some JR wheels. DIY aluminum taillights. Front lights are some cheap LEDs with halos. IDK, <laughs> what exhaust it has. Uh, and a short throw shifter as well. I did Jack Daniels coolant overflow tank and the spray paint job. It looks cool. I like the, I do like the taillights. I think definitely that's something cool and interesting. And of course you're from across the pond. I don't even know where that is. I guess Cyprus, but I, I don't know even where Cyprus is. But very, very cool. I mean, I think the lights look great. Uh, that would definitely not fly here in America. There's a Ford Fiesta, what looks like, or maybe a Nissan Micra or something behind you with uh, eyelashes. Uh, so stop that, like, immediately. Thank you so much for sending it in. It's really cool seeing cars from, you know, across the globe. I mean, that's it's just really, really humbling to me to, to see that. This next one is from Cole. It is a 1991 MR2 Turbo. It says, I traded my 350Z for this months ago. This car sat in someone's storage unit for the last decade until I got my hands on it. I daily drove it for two months until a valve on the cylinder four got stuck open and destroyed my piston and my turbo. So currently in the process of rebuilding the engine. The new engine has a Kometic head gasket and APR head studs. I'm also running a Gretti Profec boost controller, Gretti intercooler, and blow-off valve. The body kit is a Tom's kit. To my knowledge, along with a custom wing. I've been following your channel since the very first RX-7 video. Hope your channel continues to grow. Thank you. Love the content. Also, you had one of my old FCs in one of your videos a few years ago. Unfortunately, I recently had to get rid of my FC drift car because I needed something to drive while I was rebuilding this. I definitely will get my hands on another FC when the time is right. If you're ever in South Florida, hit me up. You could review my MR2 or my 67 Camaro if you'd like, and we could grab a beer. Hello. Well, well, best of luck. Keep up the good work. Yes, I would love to come to South Florida and drive your MR2 Turbo and your Camaro. That Camaro is really, really cool. That is something I would really want to get my hands on just because you don't see those anymore. Um, so if I'm ever in Florida, I'm, I'm actually literally going to write down your information, Cole. And if I'm ever in Florida, I'm definitely going to hit you up. If that goes for anyone, um, literally anyone, if you want me to review stuff, send it my way, no matter where your location is, because, you know, there's times where I end up in certain parts of the country for school, work, you know, pleasure, whatever. And if I can review cars while I'm there, all the better. So thank you so much, Cole, for that. That was really, really cool. And hopefully we'll meet up someday and I'll be waiting on that beer. This one's from Chris. It says, hi there, here's stuff from my GSL SE. So it has the target top on it. Uh, I like the wheels. The wheels are very interesting. Um, I personally wouldn't run them, but I think it's, uh, I think it's cool to see different unique uh, wheels that you can get for, for RX-7. So he also sent a video here. Seems about right. It sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds solid. So, I mean, obviously I'm not in front of the vehicle, but it sounds pretty healthy, which is good. Next up, we have Andrew who has sent us, let me scroll down. 
Sorry. This is my 2009 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS with an automatic. It's definitely not a race car, but it has adequate power for daily driving. I've had this car for 10,000 miles so far, and it's never given me issues, and it has 110,000 miles on it. If you're ever in Western PA, hit me up. I've noticed that you had a 4G Eclipse. Or I noticed that you haven't had a 4G Eclipse on your channel. Yes, I was about to say. And actually, this summer, I should be in... Uh, Pittsburgh, I believe. I'll be in Pittsburgh, actually, hopefully to film a uh, very low mileage 80s Taurus. Um, so if you're anywhere near Pittsburgh or anything like that, definitely hit me up. Uh, again, I'll be saving your info, and when, when I actually get those plans together, uh, I will hit you up. So thank you so much for the, uh, the 09 Eclipse. I like these. I like these body styles, and I had one as a matchbox as a kid, so I think I have a little bit of uh, nostalgia for them. It was white, and it had like a clear roof, which was really cool. Next up is from Russell, uh, his 83 RX-7. Again, I love this color. Great color. Uh, it looks like, I, I can't tell what wing that is, but I, I, I love that style wing. Uh, that's something I will eventually want to do um, to my car, but looks pretty good. I mean, looks solid. Just watch out for those uh, that, that rear rust because it'll, it'll get you. So this one is from Michael. My brother and my Miata's NC is stock and the NB is kind of stock. So again, you got to love... Oh, they're from Illinois. Hi. Uh, you got to love, you know, Miata's. I think they're great. The NB looks relatively clean from the pictures that he sent. Um, and the NC, I've never seen, I've never like had experience with, I should say, with an NC with a, a hard top on it. So that's very, very interesting. I'm not sure if those are similar in latching with the NBs or N N A uh, and NAs, um, so things like that. So thank you so much, uh, Michael, for the, the cars. And he said roast in it. I'm not trying to roast these cars. I, I, I'm just curious to see what you guys drive. Next up is another Zach. I've been a viewer of your content for a while. I've recently been able to buy my dream car by grinding for a, for a solid five years, working two jobs and saving every penny. I'd love for you to review my car located in Sydney, Australia. It's a 2000 Type RB with a mild port and single turbo conversion. Thank you for your content. I look forward to seeing you. Kind regards. I would genuinely, because if you guys don't know, I'm in Chicago, Illinois, United States. Sydney, Australia is a far way away. And with everything going on right now, obviously it's out of the picture, but I, I could see myself going to Australia to drive this car. I mean, I think, first of all, the car looks great. Um, that's not why I would do it. It's a 2000, um, a 2000, a, a Mazda RX-7 from the 2000s. That doesn't exist here right now. And I know we'll end up getting them, but that's still at least five years away. So if I can go to Australia and drive this car in the next five years, that'd be really worth it to me because then I would drive it before it hits American shores, which would be very, very cool. So Zach, um, I would not put it past me to, I, I would really love to make that happen, really, truly. So we did send a video of him backing it out of the garage here. I love that color. I mean, I, if, if I didn't FD, I think if I couldn't get CYM yellow, I would go with that blue. I think that just looks amazing. So thank you so much, Zach. I hope we meet one day. I, I really hope we do. Next is from Mario. Uh, says my FC is pretty much completely stock, so I'm sure. Uh, if the, so I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for, but it is in mint condition inside and out. I'm paying it off since I only got back in September, so that's why it's stock. Your videos helped convince me to get it and go through the buying process. So thanks. I won't be offended if you don't include it in your video. Again, super super clean. You gotta love a clean turbo too, and I. I, I'm very torn on the louvers on the back. I think for FBs, they look decent. FCs, they just look huge. From this, from the rear quarter angle, looks great. Um, and wow, I mean, the interior just looks absolutely uh, amazing. I'm interested to see if your dashboard warning lights up in the center uh, work, because if they do, then that car is truly, truly mint. Next up, we have Joseph. No subject, just two pictures of his FB. Looks pretty clean. I like it a lot. And it is from Canada. Um, what I really like about this car is that he has proper Mazda mud flaps. So if you are going to run mud flaps, um, proper Mazda ones just 
make me happy inside. Uh, so thank you so much, Joseph, for sending in your FB. Next up, we have Wyatt. So here's my AW11. Got a couple years ago, and I'm going to put a beams in it, although I haven't done much work yet. So this is a project car, but it is super cool. I love AW11. AW11 body styles. Um, I think they're absolutely super cool and they're the last generation of MR2 that I need to get my hands on. I filmed the second and third generation. So if anyone out there has an AW11 for me to drive, um, that'll be really cool. And I think a, a beams motor in that car will, will be very, very cool. Next up we have Tyler. He says, it's a 1981 Dodge Charger Omni that my friends and I put together for 24 hours of lemons. It was featured on Motor Trend on a TV show called Iron Resurrection. Anyway, we're just all some high school students and don't be afraid to roast the car. I don't want to roast this car. I want to drive this car really, really bad. First of all, Dodge Charger Omnis don't exist anymore. I don't think I've seen one in person. And if I have, I didn't know what it was or I didn't know what it was. Um, so if you are anywhere in the U S I mean, seriously, shoot me a message if you're down, uh, to have me review this car, because I, I think it's so interesting and yes, it's, it's, it's a little bit rat rotted and, and for 24 hours of lemons, but I think that just adds so much character to it. So I would love to drive this. I think it's super cool. And I've always wanted to do 24 hours of lemons, uh, and things like that. So honestly, let's set something up if you're down, seriously. I mean, that's, that's just really cool to me. Next up, we have a car from Nathan. Again, another stock FC. When I was going through these, I'm like, wow, a lot of RX-7s, but it completely makes sense. Ooh, a burgundy interior on an FC. I feel like that's really, really rare. I don't know about you, but I feel like that's super, super rare. Car looks super, super clean. I'm so glad that most of my viewers have such clean cars. I mean, it really makes me happy that these things aren't just absolutely gutted. So thank you, Nathan, for sending that in. Next up, we have Alex. Next up, we have Alex, uh, 2004 Ram 1500 with a 5.7 Hemi, five-speed automatic. I am 17, certified in collision repair, and the plan for the truck is to fix the bed rest and repaint it Patriot Blue with silver stripes, and then get Rohana RF X5 titanium rims. I'm not sure what those are, but I'm sure they're cool. Uh, currently doing an interior swap to a 2016 Ram, and then on to the power upgrade. Huge fan of the channel, and I absolutely love your content. Well, thank you. You guys know I... I, you know, my heart goes out to, to Dodge Rams. I've actually never reviewed a, a third gen Ram. Um, hopefully that should happen this summer. I have a friend with a V6 Ram, uh, with nitrous. I'm very interested to see how swapping a 2016 interior into the truck will be. That's very, very interesting. Uh, but you know, I wish you all the luck and I, I, I love cool, uh, cool modifications like that next up we have jonathan so he has sent me his sa rx7 which has a really cool paint job i don't know if that's factory or not he said all right here's my first car 1980 rx7 sa 22c was running until i graduated senior year of high school been sitting for five years until of late uh got a good engine from a buddy of mine and should be running by saturday of this week i have a large street port 12a that's being built set up I have is a four barrel Holly carburetor, racing beat intake headers waiting on my oil cooler. I'm pretty sure I follow this guy on TikTok. I'm pretty sure I've seen TikToks of this car and I'm pretty sure that he got this engine from a mutual friend, Nate. I think so. If I'm, oh God, I just backed out of everything. Why am I so dumb? Ugh, now I gotta go find the email. Oh wait, the email popped up. And last but not least, here's my 2006 Mazda RX-8 that I've had since April last year. Been a great daily driver and a joy on the back roads. It's currently getting a rebuild as well. Nothing much to build, just stock for the most part. I don't, I don't mind RX-8s. I think in the hands of the right owners, they're fine. You know, obviously he's a rotary owner. You know the deal. Uh, rev it out, pre-mix it, all that stuff. The Renesis motor just is not my favorite motor. Um, just having worked on them, you know. So this one is from Miata Logan, and he says, my first car. Again, a very, very clean Miata. I absolutely love it. I think it looks great. Clean, simple, and I love that he has the pl plush version on his dashboard. Next up is from Hernan, and just sent a video. I don't, I, I literally don't know what this video is going to contain, so please be appropriate. Oh. Oh, it's a red GSLSE FB RX-7. You guys know, obviously, it holds my heart. Um, 
I love that he has the Circle Mazda sticker still in the window. Um, and it's very, very clean GSLSE. So thank you so much for sending that in. Uh, obviously, it tugs at my heartstrings just a little bit seeing a red RX-7 like that. Next up is from Wesley, another first-gen RX-7. Uh, this is my first-gen RX-7, also known as Silver. I bought the car almost exactly a year ago, and I didn't actually get to any kind of modification. Uh, so in terms of look of it, it didn't get much. Uh, here's some pictures of silver that I've taken so far. I, I would love to record a video of it running, but unfortunately I sent the carb off to get rebuilt last month and due to lockdown over here in Malaysia, the car is stuck at the shop and I don't know when I'll be able to get her back. These pictures were from my phone. The best I could do now. Anyway, love your videos. They are very helpful and entertaining and I can't wait for Rotary Life season five. Take care and keep up the good work. A couple things. First of all, it's really, really cool to me to see cars fbs mainly from like malaysia like I, I i just never would have considered that fbs made it over there and i'm sure finding parts over there uh super scarce second of all thank you so much for the kind words uh i too am looking forward to rotary life season five i have almost the first episode complete i'm waiting on some tools to come in the mail but as we know the mail's been slowed down and things like that um but yeah i think overall this car just looks great i really want your front indicator lights I, I kind of want those 50 50s. Um, I think those look really cool, but overall the car just looks great. And again, in a place like Malaysia, I, I can't imagine that finding parts is easy. So thank you so much for uh, the support. This one is from Brady and is a picture of a RX eight and is, it's for sale. So if anyone wants an RX RX eight, uh, hit up, hit up Brady. Um, car looks good. Car looks clean. Um, from what I can see. And I like the wheels. I think the wheels are nice, clean and simple. Um, not overdone. Again, there's a lot of riced out RX eights out there in the world. Next up is from Karen. Uh, it's a 1995 Mazda RX-7 Touring Edition with single turbo conversion. It's making around 270 horsepower and has a 99 spec front bumper. The turbo is a Borg Warner EFR 7670. I love the color. Montego, Montego, however you want to say it, that blue color um, I think is absolutely great for FDs. Uh, I absolutely love that color. And uh, it seems like a pretty clean, simple build, but a, a, a definitely a decently reliable build. So thank you. So this one is from Ethan, a 1983 Mazda RX-7 with a 12A. Plans, want to wide body it, uh, get for the highway racer vibe, dual Weber carbs for sure. According to my Speedo, I've done 220 kilometers, but I'm 100% sure that's wrong. Yeah, probably. Um, I like it. I mean, I, I think it definitely has, as long as it's pretty rust free, um, I think you could you could get away with this becoming a pretty cool car. Not a big fan of the pinstripes or the or the hood, um, but I think uh, I think this really has the works of being a, a, a cool car. It looks pretty solid and the body looks straight. So as long as you got a healthy engine, you could really let this thing ride. Next up, we have a submission from Jacob. Uh, so this is a CYM Yellow FD owned by Colton, and the silver car is Jacob's. Uh, these are actually friends of mine, um, and so I. Hopefully we'll be filming these cars again this summer. I actually drove the yellow FD posted here uh, when it had 8,000 miles on it. Yeah, an 8,000 mile FD. I have not seen Jacob's FD in person. Hopefully if I don't see it this summer that he'll bring it up for Mazda Midwest. Come to Mazda Midwest, Jacob, please. I want to see that thing. Next up we have Max. And he says, hey, Zach, love your stuff. Hopefully this is interesting enough. She ain't much, but she's my baby. Got plans for wheels, tile, tile, tiles tires and coils this summer all the best from colorado i'll be in colorado this year uh denver and golden and uh colorado springs i'm not 100 percent sure when yet it should be the end of may but if all this stuff goes on longer we might have to push uh our vacation um but i will be in colorado so if you are open to having a review done i will be in colorado this year 100 percent um so car looks pretty clean i love the background i mean these shots are really really cool um and overall yeah i just i i i, I haven't really driven much audis from this era um if any so i'd love to dip my dip my toe in uh for that so again i'll be in colorado um max so hit me up if you're down for a review. All right, so this one's from Phantom and says, my FB, I hope you like it. A wing, he has a wing similar to my friend Merv. Actually, this is a very similar car to my friend Merv. It has similar wheels, has the diamond racing wheels from what it looks like, at least in the rear. 
Uh, overall, it's a slick top, which I'm, slick tops are growing on me. The new blue car is, is a slick top, so it's it's growing on me. But overall, not not a bad car. You know, I love a good RX-7. So this one is from Ladislav. Is that how you say your name? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for butchering it. But it says, hi, Zach. Here's my beauty. It's a 1986 Mazda RX-7 FC Series 4 Sport Coupe. I bought her sight unseen and I'm bringing her back to her former glory. This is from the engine over subframe bushings and taillights. In the pics, you can see the car is in my driveway. The engine bay before the rebuild is currently going on. We're working hard to get her finished as soon as possible. You are one of the people that convinced me to buy an RX-7 and I fell in love with her. Thank you. So again, it's always cool hearing those stories and I've been hearing more and more of those stories of people like, oh, you're kind of the reason I, I got these cars. And that's like the most heartwarming thing in the entire world to me. So thank you so much to everyone that reaches out. But the car looks great. I don't know where, where you're from. Um, obviously somewhere over in Europe. So that's, that's really, really cool to me. Um, just seeing, you know, knowing that I have an influence on people in Europe is just insane to me. So thank you so much for the kind words. Next up we have, hey man, this is my stock 86300ZX. My Insta is at prod.2jrz. I watched your Z31 series and I want to see part eight, man. Yeah, so the, the Z31 series, um, Garrett, who owns the Z31, actually moved up to Michigan permanently. Um, so... I'd like to film an update on that car, but of course, you know, with having four hours between us, it's going to be difficult. But this car particularly looks really, really clean. It looks just like Garrett's car, um, and I absolutely love it. I love the stock wheels, you know, and there's just something to be said about a stock 300ZX. I have 10 minutes left of recording on my uh, camera, so we are going to have to try to fly through these. Um, so I apologize if I kind of nip yours short. Uh, next up is from Tyler. Please review my 1983 RX-7. The engine is a peripheral port 13B that I built myself. Still breaking the engine in and hasn't, hasn't revved past 6,000 yet, but it feels strong. Thanks from Canada. Car looks great. Love these wheels. Yeah, that's all I could really say is that I, I, I absolutely love it. And, and once you, the break-in miles are done, um, a peripheral port, that's going to be, that's going to be a hell of a ride. That's going to be insane. Uh, this one is from, this one is Mike's 88 FC looks super clean. Again, I gotta, gotta toss hands at someone who has a really clean RX-7. Um, it seems to be missing the front sticker that says Mazda. I believe Atkins sells those if you're looking for that. Next one is from William. It says, here is my E36 M3. Hope you like it. I love E36s. I love M3s. I was supposed to review an E36 M3. I drove it for about an hour one night and I said, hey, tomorrow morning, I'm going to come out, film it. Uh, and life got in the way and unfortunately I wasn't able to. So I still haven't filmed an E36 M3, um, but I, I've driven one and I absolutely love them. They feel like rotaries. They just want to rev to the moon. Love it. Next up is from Max, longtime fan of the channel. It's not quite a rotary, but its heart is in the right place. Uh, 2003 Subaru... 2003, 2013 Subaru BRZ. Uh, she's my first car, bought second hand. I'll keep her well maintained and I love her to bit. So again, uh, a super clean car. I mean, it's a 2013. It's not going to not be clean. I like these cars a lot. Uh, you know, I recently reviewed the 2020 uh, Toyota 8.6. I just love the way they handle their low power, fun cars. And, and I think they're really going to be the next S chassis. I really, really think so. Next one is from Eric. And he said, here's my 1962 Ford Falcon van. 170 cubic inch, 2.8 liter straight six, 105 horsepower, three on the tree manual. This car, Eric, if you are watching, I believe you're in California from the looks of the plate and stuff. I'm going to be out in California in the next year. I would love to film this this van. I think this thing is absolutely insanely, insanely cool. And one of the coolest cars I've seen in a while. I mean, just the Ford Falcon van. I just think overall it, it just, it looks so cool. It's unique. It's different. And I'm so glad that you kept the hundred, the, the, the 2.8 liter straight six and three on the tree manual. I'm so glad that you haven't thrown an LS into it quite yet. Um, and so if there's any way that I could film this car and if you keep it 
the way it is until then, I would be forever grateful. That is just super cool. And I, I wish I could spend more time on it, but I'm counting down the clock on my camera. So thank you so much, Eric. This one is from Chris. Rate my car. This is a 1986 GXL RX-7. I've had it for a year and a half now and I daily drive it with a blown coolant seal uh, before getting a daily. The car is 73,000 miles. I'm now pulling the whole thing apart to refresh the engine and bridge port, clean everything up. I bought it stock. The car looks great. Uh, car looks pretty clean. I mean, obviously 73,000 miles and I'm glad that people are keeping these things uh, on the road. I think that's, that's huge. This one's from Mike, uh, 2009 Cobalt SS turbocharged sedan in victory red. I actually reviewed one of these. I reviewed Mike's car. Um, and so if you want my full thoughts on that, uh, just type in Cobalt SS up on, uh, my, my channel and, and you'll find the car because that's it. I mean, I, I drove this car and I, I really genuinely loved it. I really, really love that car. This one is from, I believe Malachi is how you pronounce that. And it is an FB. Love the 80s style lights in the background. Obviously, I love a good, clean FB. So thank you, Malachi, for that. Next, we have Thomas. Hi, my name is Thomas. I'm from Winnipeg, and I drive a 1952 DeSoto Fire Dome 8. This is my first and currently only car I own and drive. I was 15 when my grandfather... I don't know why I said that weird. Said if I could get it to run, I could have it. I have some pictures and videos. This is super cool to me. I think of all the cars I've been sent today, although I want to drive that Dodge Omni and that Ford Falcon van, I think this is the car I would want to drive the most. And so, Sir Thomas, if there's any way we could work out a way uh, for me to review this car, I, I just think it's just just the coolest thing in the world. Um, and DeSoto isn't around anymore. So that, that really draws my attention, of course. Yeah, let's make that happen, please, seriously. Th this is from Tyler, just a picture of his FB, of course, with the hood pop. Love the wheels, Diamond Racing Steelies, you know, have my heart. Uh, I absolutely love it. Next is from Oliver. I present to you my shitbox 205. I got the car a year ago from a local comment mechanic reliable car and great for making heads turn very comfortable seating no power steering and no abs so it feels like a time capsule of the 80s so yeah it's a 1992 peugeot 205 1.1 liter this car i would love to drive because obviously we don't have it here in the u.s i don't know where you're from um I don't know why it looks like Poland in the background. I have no idea where you're from, um, but we, we did not get these in the U S I've never seen one of these in person. And again, a car that I would, I would sell off a lot of things to be able to drive. So while you say it's a shit box, I, I would honestly, if I saw that at a car show, I would spend more time looking at this than probably, you know, a Ferrari or something like that, or even a GTR at this point. And last but not least, David sent this in as the clock was ticking as I started making this video. Hey, this is my 2008 WRX. I've had it for almost two years, and it's pretty, pretty gnarly at the track. Uh, he has a cat bag system, swift lowering springs, sway bars, 07 and 06 brake calipers. Engine is all stock. In the future, I need to stiffen up the chassis a bit, but mostly it's a fun handling car. I also installed a Raspberry Pi the car and wrote a program to read obd2 data display i also have a euro beat pedal too but this still needs a bit of work but i don't have any fix that's really interesting running a, a raspberry pi in a car that that always bewilders me but the wrx looks solid i think he's you know i think he has a great handling car and i've driven a, a 2014 which i believe is like a similar body style and i absolutely loved it the power is great i mean even the stock wrx's uh make great great power um and so i yeah thank you so much to uh david for sending this in just in the nick of time so thank you guys so much i know this was a very very long video um but I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are washing your hands and uh, and and abiding by whatever your government is telling you because these are crazy times. Um, but you know, just reading through this, this last, I mean, this has taken me an hour to record, but uh, just this last hour, you guys have made me forget about the crazy, crazy world we live in and, uh, and kind of given me some hope. Hopefully I meet some of you guys um, with these cars and hopefully I'm able to film your cars and kind of show off what you've done and, and uh, that sort of thing. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope to do more videos like this. Um, and I'm sorry if I didn't roast your car. I, some people were looking for roasts. Uh, I love cars. I love all cars so, so much. 
Um, and even if I didn't particularly say in the camera that I want to review your car, I want to review your car. Um, unless it's an RX-7, because I've, I've reviewed so many RX-7s. Um, it's not that I don't want to film it, though. Uh, there's always something I could film with the car. And I, I just love meeting up with the rotary people as well. Um, and so stuff like that. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this long video. I won't rant on any longer. I'll let you get on with your life. But thank you guys so much. It really, from the bottom of my heart, seeing all the reviews or, or all the, the cars and, and uh, messages I got uh, was really, really heartwarming. And so I just, yeah, I appreciate you guys so much. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys next video. Take care, guys. I finished with 29 seconds left on the SD card.